Greetings friends, this is Survival Doc. Today I'd like to talk about carbon dioxide, particularly as it relates to long-term food storage and also storage of other survival supplies. Now one of the ways that you prolong the life of food that you store is by removing the oxygen. And you do that by replacing the air that's in the bag or whatever storage container you're using with carbon dioxide. A lot of people don't think about this, but also oxygen is responsible for rust or corrosion of metal parts. So if you're putting away, or particularly if you're burying uh, steel parts like firearms and ammunition, if you remove the oxygen from the containers that you're putting your metal parts in, you'll also inhibit the rust and corrosion. What I have here is a pressurized tank of carbon dioxide. Now this is not something that I recommend you as a survivalist or prepper run out and buy. I do not recommend that because this is way too expensive and you could spend your money on much more reasonable items. I have this because I picked this up at an estate sale for $10, which was a bargain because this holds here by itself would cost more than $10. These valves and gauges here would cost probably $100. This was used for airbrush painting. And I have it because I just got a really good deal if on it. If you happen to find a good deal on a carbon dioxide tank like this, great. But if not, the most practical way to replace the oxygen in your survival containers with carbon dioxide is to use dry ice. And what you do is you put a little piece of dry ice in your bucket. You don't sell it until the dry ice completely sublimates or completely uh, dissipates. And you put the top on loosely, allow the dry ice to sublimate. All right, dry ice, as I'm going to demonstrate here, carbon dioxide is heavier than air, so what it does is it settles to the bottom of the container and it pushes the air, which includes the oxygen, out of the container. Once the uh, dry ice is completely sublimated, then you seal your bucket. And but because uh, carbon dioxide is heavier, it will remain in the bucket, and, uh, and I'm going to demonstrate here how that occurs. What I have here is an ordinary glass pitcher, an ordinary glass jar, a candle, and this little container I'm going to be using as a platform in here so the candle is not sitting on the bottom. And I have tongs so that I can lift the candle without burning my hand. And of course I have my hose for the carbon dioxide. Okay, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to fill this container with carbon dioxide. All right, again, carbon dioxide is heavier than air. So you can imagine that I'm putting a liquid in here like water, and this is filling up with carbon dioxide. And then when I stop at the carbon dioxide, as long as you don't uh, move it around too much and as long as there's no draft or breeze in here, the carbon dioxide will remain in the container. Okay, I'm going to turn off my hose here. I'm going to light my candle. Put the candle in the jar, and now I'm going to pour the carbon dioxide in the jar and extinguish the candle. And there you have it. Demonstrating carbon dioxide is heavier than air, and that is the reason that when you're filling your storage container with carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide will remain in the bottom of the container unless it is disturbed too much. Now, I will point out that another way to remove the oxygen from your food storage container is to use oxygen absorbing packs. 
So carbon dioxide is just one method. Dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide, is one practical method. Oxygen absorbing packs is another. This is Survival Doc, reminding you, be prepared or be prepared to be fleeced.